Hello, Marcel here, and I'm going to show you the basics of using the Surface Com node in Ornitrix for Maya in conjunction with some other operators to create a parametric first setup for a character. So I'm going to use this nice little bat model over here and place some fur on this guy using the Ornatrix tools, which are available from this shelf. You must load this shelf first before using Ornatrix, and we have gone over this in a previous video. So once I'm ready, I can select my bat character and I can use the quick hair button to add some hair to the mesh. And when I do that, I get my operator stack appearing on the left. So right now the hair is kind of too long and we can fix this by going into guides from mesh node and decreasing the length of the hair. So I'm going to set it to something like two. And I might also decrease the point count because we don't really need this many points. So I'll just set it to five for now. I will also go into the hair from guides node and I will change the interpolation from barycentric to affine just to get some nicer interpolation of hairs on the wings of the skin character. I'm also going to go and assign a material to this and I'm going to use the same material that's used on the body. Right now the hair is kind of just sticking out of the bat and we want to groom it and maybe give it some shape. So to do this we have a nice parametric tool in Ornatrix called Surface Comb. I'm going to apply Surface Comb right above my hair from Guides node so it will apply to the hairs and not to the guides. To do this I'm going to select my hair from Guides node and I'm going to use the Surface Comb shelf button to add the surface comb node. And right away it actually changes the shape of the hair but they're all pointing in different directions and this is not ideal. I want to have more control over this. So initially I'm going to change the actual shape of the hair as it is located relative to the mesh. And to do this I'm going to select the surface comb node and modify this graph over here. So as I change these values you can see the hair in the viewport is changing in real time and giving me a nice preview of exactly how bent the hairs are relative to the surface. And once I'm satisfied with the result, I can just leave it on that and move on to creating the sinks. So sinks in Surface Comb are special direction vectors which define the flow of the hair. To add sinks, I'm going to use the sink editing tool and I'm going to set the mode to add. Once I do this, I can just click and drag on the mesh to define sinks. As I drag the sink, you can see that all of the hairs respect the direction of the sink and this sink will stay glued to the surface even when the mesh is animated later. On. I can define as many sinks as I want and the longer the arrow of the sink the more influence it will have over the hairs. So maybe I will have the ear hairs pointing out and the wing hairs are going to point down and maybe the hair over the eyebrows is going to point in different directions as well. And I can also control the hair on the back of this character by making the sink point down. After I have created my initial sinks, I can also go and edit them. So to edit them, I just click on the sink to select it. And then I can either drag the sink to change its position on the mesh, or I can change the orientation of the sink by dragging its arrow. There are also multiple sink types. So right now we're using a directional sink, but I can also change it to be a sink which repels hair away from it or which attracts hair to it. But right now we are only interested in directing the hair, so I'm going to leave it at direct. So you can see how quickly and easily I have groomed my character's fur. And the Surface Comb tool really allows you great control over many hairs at the same time, which is the source of its power. I can also go and add a little bit of chaos, so maybe I'll have 40% chaos to make the hairs a little bit messy maybe 20% is enough. And now I am a lot more satisfied with the shape of the character's fur. I'm going to go back to my hair from guides node and change the viewport count of the hairs to a bigger value, maybe like 5000, to just get a better and more accurate picture of how the strands are positioned. And right now I see a few problems. I don't really want hairs to be generated inside the character's mouth and I don't want them to be generated on the character's hands and feet. I'm also seeing some problems with interpolation here and they can probably fix this by changing my interpolation to polar. To fix the hairs being generated in the wrong places, I'm going to apply a distribution map. And this map is going to be a texture. So here I have a viewport count and right below I have a distribution multiplier which has a little map button. If I click this button, I can select a file text map which will create a blank map. I have previously gone over my character's texture and created a little Photoshop black and white distribution map. So all the black parts are the parts where the hair is not going to be generated. 
all the white parts are going to generate the hair and the gray areas will determine the probability that the hair will be generated in these areas. So I saved this map out as a JPEG and I'm going to find and load it inside Maya. So we'll just load the first distribution map and right away we can see that the hands are no longer generating the fur as well as the inside of the mouth and the lip areas which is exactly what we want. One last thing I want to change is the length of the hairs because I don't want them to be the same length throughout the character. I want the fur on the character's belly to be a little bit longer than say fur around the character's eyes. To do this I'm going to add another operator about the hair from guides node called the strand length operator and it is also accessible through the Ornatrix shelf button. Once I click and select it I can just change the value ch to change the overall length and I can increase it as well as decrease it but we are interested in controlling this length along the character's body so to do this I'm also going to use a map. Just like before I have gone to Photoshop and I have created a little bitmap with the white areas being the longer parts of the fur and the darker areas being the shorter parts of the fur. So for example this is the mouth which will have very short fur, the face and the ears will have slightly longer fur and the rest of the character will have the same length of fur throughout. So I'm just going to select my length node and use the value multiplier which also has a little texture map button which I'm going to click and select file and inside I'm just going to select my fur length JPEG. As soon as I select it you can see that the fur is now different throughout different parts of the character so it is nice and short over here and it is much longer on the character's body just like we wanted and maybe I can go back to my length node and increase the value to 2 to make the fur throughout the character longer. So now we have a nice and furry bat that is ready to render and the great part about it all is that you can use your hair stock to go back and change things in the future. So even right now I can go back to my surface comb node and I can go and select my sinks and change the direction of the character's fur around the eyebrows if I wanted to or I can go to the length node and modify the length and all of this is non-linear and parametric and will stay this way throughout the character's lifetime including the animation and rendering process. I will save the scene and I will make it available in the sample section of our website so you can open it up and play with these parameters yourself. I hope you guys found this mini tutorial useful and thank you very much for watching.